Hello everyone, welcome back to Banners of Ruin. If you're wondering how quickly you get back to your run from the start menu, click continue. And just like that, you're ready to go. So we are at crossroads on both sides, or we can take a fight. Fight's going to be worth some XP and rewards to us. So at this point, apart from Islington being a little wounded, I don't see why we wouldn't take an extra fight that we can. Let's see what we're dealing with. Okay, we got... Looks like five otters. Front row attacking first. Two attacking Kesselmead for nine each. Deals nine damage if opponent is in the opposite lane. Applies provoked. So provoked is that we can only attack the adjacent creature from us. Otherwise, what do we have in hand? Battering, we can shove someone back or switch positions. Applies 30 Salter's Net. Damage dealt by the character with Salter's Net is consumed by the net's attack until it reaches zero. So if they put a net on us for 30, we have to deal 30 damage to that net before we can attack other things, which is going to be a pain. But we can battering ram this guy into the back rank and not have to deal with this attack immediately. Otherwise, defending, sharp steel... Bleeding, Brace, Battering Ram, Poison. All fairly regular stuff. So, this does weapon damage. And 13 is our highest weapon damage attack. So, we'll start there with somebody. I think I'm going to start with Bleeding at the back. And then we'll team that up with Falchion. Deal 11 damage if they have no... Shield apply five. Well, we'll have to see if that applies after cutting through the shield. No, because they had one left. We don't get the bleeding. That's a shame. I would have used a concealed blade if I'd have known otherwise. Let's put some poison on them so they can start ticking down. What's this? Headhunter. At the start of this character's turn, all opponents below 50% vitality gain two vulnerable. That sucks, but should be fine. Let's see. We can spend two here to shove this guy back. That way they're not attacking. And now we just have two attacks against Kesselmead, who has plenty of defense. And we can just give him... Actually, let's not give him 15 more yet. Let's make three of these, because we have all the extra energy to spend. And let's just rail on this guy, get them bleeding as much as possible. Then we'll spend two on solid footing. And why not give you a brace? All right, that'll do for that. So we are now provoked. We can only attack the highlighted character until provoked is removed. So you can see this guy gets highlighted when I cover Provoked with the cursor. And now at the back here, we've got two guys attacking with nets, and then this guy provoking as well. And they're attacking Islington twice, and Deslin once. Anticipation. The next incoming damage to this character is reduced to zero, so it doesn't matter if that's going to hit through shield or not. It's just all reduced to zero. And these guys are doing 21 between them. So let's gain 15 defense and one will. Unfortunately, everyone on the rank is the same race. So this isn't going to help us. Are they not all otters? I'm confused. Go away. Apply three to target any rank. If there is more than one race on rank, supply apply this as well I assumed they were all otters but perhaps not maybe the one in the helmet is a dog no idea, very confused in any case we still have a hand to play let's get some extra draw going you can have the defense we will have somebody from the front row attack for 10. 
Who else is being attacked right now? You're being attacked for 12. You might as well gain some brace. And Kasumid, you can have three. Could have made some more concealed blades, but so be it. Here come the nets. So we have to deal 30 damage to those before we can get through them. Which is going to be a pain. We definitely want to attack with Oathkeeper. That's going to do 14 damage and apply vulnerability. And is going to increase its damage permanently by 2. But again, we have to get through this net first, which is a real big pain. Now, Kesselmead, uh, sorry, Islington is definitely going to play Yellow Powder because that is going to heal him for five. The net took 15 of that, but we still applied the crippled, so that's good. Then Warhammer. Nobody's vulnerable yet, and I don't think we have a way to make somebody vulnerable, unfortunately. Let's make somebody vulnerable. Oh, sorry, somebody overwhelmed. Then with our five remaining energy, we can hit there and there. We've got rid of our net. Weapon damage if only opponent in lane plus 10. Well, that's not going to happen, but we can still attack for 11. Ruin a card, deal 20 plus 11 to rank. Well, that's easy. We'll do that to the back, although we still have 30 net to get through. Ruin a card, get rid of the... Get rid of that. Then attack this lane. They take damage, which is great. Apply four to each character in rank for every stack of blood on active character. No good to us. But we will kill somebody probably. You're dying to bleeding. You're dying to... You're not dying to bleeding, which is awkward. These guys are attacking. Deals nine damage and moves opponent into the back rank if position is full swap. So they're both attacking the guy at the back, which is rough. And we're not going to be able to kill them. So we'll have this guy and his charge just attack back here instead. Oh, we're provoked by this guy. Fine. We'll make some of these. Just keep wailing on them. And we might as well play that that we have. This fight's not going great. The provoking is not helpful. Kick if the position is vacant behind them, move them to it. None of the positions behind are currently vacant. You're going to die to nine bleeding. You have two bleeding and vulnerable. And if you're moved, you will die. You are not currently at risk of dying at all. So let's deal damage to this whole lane. That's good. Yeah, that works. No one in that row is attacking us anymore. Move or swap position to a new position. Ruin a card, apply eight. Let's do that first. Who needs heavy shields, eh? Banish two non ruin cards from your hand, deal 20 damage, gain marked. Now we have one energy left. I don't want to kick currently because neither of these guys are attacking. But we'll put precision on for next turn. Alright, that'll do. This fight feels really disjointed and I'm not sure why. We shuffle, we get kick back immediately, which is good because now we can kick this guy back and do damage to them. This guy has precision, so we want to hit with something big against somebody. Deal weapon damage if only opponent in lane plus 10. So if we hit this guy, 
He now has 29 bleeding. He's done for. We just have this guy to worry about. We might as well kick them. So they're not going to attack us this turn. This guy's going to die to bleeding. Then let's have you. Nobody has any charge. You get some shield. Oh, I should have given you solid footing. It's all right. We're going to figure this out. Deals 11 damage if opponent has marked, applies 3 bleed if they do not already have bleed. That's fine. So they are already uh, vulnerable. So we will definitely always want to hit with Oathkeeper. Then we will Precision Warhammer. That puts on extra bleeding, extra marked. Then we will scrap that to attack with this with charge. That's more bleeding than they have health. And that is a win. Here's our cash. Here's our reward card. I don't think we need any of this. Our deck's already kind of massive. So now we reach crossroads. They all go together. Then this event will all be the same. Combat, combat, combat. I'm still not sure if this definitely means that this is a slightly harder combat. But after that one and our health being a little low, I'll take the middle one. Thank you ever so much. Oh boy. We've got archers. We've got great big tanks. This is going to be a hoot. Oathkeeper doing more damage every time it's played, which is great. Can't kick anybody. Ruin a card, deal 20 plus weapon damage to opponent rank. That's going to be big. Might do that to the back rank. If it deals damage to vitality, half the damage is dealt as bleeding. Well, you have five energy. So let's do that. Oh, that's the wrong character. It's fine, because what we can do... Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Alright, you're getting this. You're bleeding a bunch. You are doing that. Ruin strategy. We don't need it that badly. No, ruin kick. Because we can't play it now anyway. Then you are reckless cleaving the back row. These guys are nearly dead. You can have some strategy. Removal shield, gain two hysterical, deal 15 times two damage. I don't want to do that yet, but I will make some of these and go three. You're dead to bleeding next turn. You can have some more bleeding. This was an awkward turn, but it's done now. Who's getting attacked most? We're all getting attacked equally. You have the lowest defense. Oh, what a crappy turn. And then we're to the back rank. You're dying. You're attacking in front of you. You're attacking in front of you. Are we going to have enough damage? Brawl, deal one character. Every character loses one. Everyone at the back. So they will do take 18. That's a good start. If we do that, then that. You're dying to bleeding. We need to hit you again. They're both dying to bleeding. That's going to be a whole missed turn for them. We'll take 15 defense for ourselves. You can get a heavy shield. Do we want to move or swap any heroes or any villains? No. So we don't need to play another character's weapon or talent. 
Bleeding, bleeding, opponents miss a turn, back to us. Definitely tension across the rank, why wouldn't we? Deal 13 damage if only opponent in lane plus 10. They are only one foe in lane. Let's go after the guy at the end, I think. Now he's dying to bleeding, which is great. Now we're down to two. We can battering ram one of these guys back. Six damage if opponent has more than 18 applies for bleed. Deals 10 damage and applies 2 bleeding. Banishes the next weapon card you draw for the target character. Uh, I'd rather get rid of this because that means this attack definitely hurts us. And I'd simply rather not be hurt than lose a weapon card. That much I can deal with. We'll take quick hands. You can be poisoned. Brace and withdraw. These guys are both attacking Islington, so we'll withdraw Islington to the center. And you get a brace. Now these guys are both going to miss their attacks because we moved. So we evaded everything there. Now they're attacking us from the back. Deal 6 damage if opponent has more than 18 applies 4 bleed. I would love to not receive 4 bleed, but we currently do not have any way of moving that character to the front rank so we're just going to have to hit them as hard as we can as fast as we can they are already vulnerable so let's put stacks of overwhelm on them so that's 175% damage from all future attacks we'll also roar that makes it 125% damage And attacking from the front for 10 will mean we actually attack for 22. I think it was 47 all in, which is incredible. And now we can spend this here. Who's got Scornful Bite? You do. I don't think we're going to need another brace at this point. Deal 25 damage. Take 2 damage for each card in hand. If we can play everything that we've got left... You still have enough energy back there, so discard a card. We'll discard the Concealed Blade. Then we'll use our Will to play Round Shield, spawning Take Cover. Then you can play the Overbearing Strike. That means we have no cards left in our hands. We can attack for 25, plus the Vulnerable. That is all done. We could have another Tensions. Instinct draw. This character's next talent from your draw pile. If weapon damage... Deal weapon damage if two-handed. Deal to lane. Let's take more tension. Get through all of that. Chance to offload. Buy cards or a chance to heal. Let's take a light chance to heal here. You turn the corner and find yourself in a less than reputable part of town. Many of the structures are in disrespair, disrepair and even the light seems to avoid this place. Up ahead you see people nestled in a small sanctuary. Before your eyes can adjust, it smells hit you. You're not sick. Get out of here. I haven't time to deal with you. We haven't time for this. Ruin a card. Heal a character to max vitality. Let's go before we catch something. We have wounded. Heal a character below 20% max. Below 20%. 2 max. Uh, let's heal somebody. We'll ruin a card to do so. What don't we need most right now? Honestly, I think Rush is not getting used very much at all. You're down 12. You're down 19. So you're getting a full heal. Gain high spirits, a chance to upgrade, or a hidden gem. I'll take the gem. Thank you ever so much. Apply three bleed. Well, we want that to be on something that does AoE damage, because then it will do three bleed to everybody. So we've already got one on our powder weapon. So I think wild brawl. 
deal character, every character loses one stamina, deal damage to a rank for six. That means everyone in the rank will be having three bleed added to that attack. Courage, a chance to improve, scruples, investigate, or quick round, chance to heal by 50%. Let's investigate. Some guards approach the nearby checkpoint, kicking and dragging a hair in front of them. You recognize him. Oi, taking this one to the gallows. Eyewitnesses saw him helping these sodding Blackfoots running around. You heard about them lot, right? Hold on. You mean they're not part of the riots? We can't get risk getting caught. Ruin three skills. We have to help. Remove three ruins and enter combat. Well, we only have one ruin, but I still think we can help. Okay, front row, attacking safety in numbers and dealing 8 damage. Getting fortress and safety in numbers dealing 8 damage. We'll deal stacks of overwhelm and charge immediately to the three at the front. Oh, it's one character, not a rank. Well, so be it. Uh, if only opponent in lane... They take 35 thanks to the Overwhelm. We'll also hit them with Vanguard for 15. We'll also hit them with Sharp Weapon for 13. With Kesselmead, we'll make some Blades. Each one of these is going to add to the Bleeding as well as just the standard attack. And with 21 and 13, they'll be dead in one turn's time. Who's taking the brunt of the attacks here? Definitely Dreslin, so you can take a guard and a brace. And that's everything for us. Right, our turn again. We can kick the Ender Brute to the back, meaning he'll die immediately to the bleeding. Ruin a card, deal 20 plus 11 to opponent rank. Allies on your rank take 15. So we're going to want to do that. Alright, so. We can't move anybody from the back that's worth moving, because this guy in the center is not. But we don't have any other way to move people. So let's kick you back anyway. Then yellow powder everyone at the back. We'll apply 15 shield to you. We get a point of will. Then we'll reckless charge. Ruining withdraw. Hit that back rank. Deal 5 damage, take 1. Sure. You have the lowest defense. We'll make more shivs over here. We'll start somebody bleeding. Both of the two at the front are just about the same. So we'll start the bleeding back here. No harm done. Back to the front, dealing eight. If opponent has shield, applies to vulnerable, moves forward if possible. Well, these guys are going to have a bad time. So, all attacks here are doing 150% damage. Let's draw another card. We'll put poison on you, then attack the other. Unfortunately, we need the three draw from our prep this turn rather than the next turn when it's actually going to come in, but so be it. You're going to die in two turns. Good. Lovely damage by crippled there. And now they are not in the attacking rank. They are. Deals 12 damage, gains 5 defense. 
deal six damage if opponent has more than 18 applies four. So we don't need to worry about applying block particularly this turn. But we will definitely Wild Brawl and Oath Keeper. Start wailing on you. And with a little bit of bleeding at the back there, they'll be done for. So we'll make a couple more of these. That's nine against four, they're dealt with. this. That is 11 against 8. They're dealt with. Now we have 4 energy at the back to start hitting these guys up the front. Battering round. Push to back rank if occupied switch positions. Uh, if we switch this guy's position, he'll take 3 from the crippled and then 8 from the bleeding. He'll be finished now. seems to basically be a run all about managing bleeding more than anything else. Right, so you're done for. We just have to worry about this guy who is dealing 12. If this character has bleeding, deal 6 instead. So they're not doing any damage. We can just worry about hurting them as much as possible right now. Simple stuff. Deal 5 damage. Each time you play this card in combat, plus 5 damage. If unplayed during cleanup, reset the damage. If we... I wonder if that carries over across runs or not. Across, like, individual fights. Natural selection. Tight formation. I'm going to skip this one, I think. Combat. Prisoners or combat. Well, that is 27 minutes into the run, so we'll call that there. And then next time, we will deal with the prisoners, which is a big and exciting encounter. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you're enjoying the series, please do consider subscribing or hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, you can put them down below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.